So in this experiment, we are looking at the oxidase test, and this is activity 5-7. So before I can explain the oxidase test, I need to give you kind of an overview of cellular respiration. And so this is not going to be tested directly for lab. However, you will hear about this later in lecture, but I just want to introduce it here so that that way you can understand this process. So when we talk about cellular respiration, cellular respiration is the process by which cells will break down food and they will produce ATP. Now, cellular respiration can be divided into three main steps. We have glycolysis. Glyco refers to sugar. Lysis is breaking. So this is taking a six carbon glucose and chopping it in half to two three carbon pyruvates. When we break down glucose, when we chop it in half, we are going to produce some ATP. We get two ATP by substrate level phosphorylation, so by direct synthesis. Also during the process of glycolysis, we transfer electrons from glucose onto an electron carrier and we form what are called NADH. Now, glycolysis begins in the cytoplasm, but the rest of cellular respiration will happen in the mitochondria, in eukaryotic cells. And so these pyruvic acid, those two three carbon pyruvic acids, will be transported into the mitochondria and they will go through a step called a transition step. And during this transition step, for each pyruvate, we're gonna break off one carbon and we get two carbon dioxides. To the remaining two carbon fragment, we add what's called a coenzyme A, and we end up with two acetyl-CoA's. During this process, because we're breaking bonds, we're gonna get more electron carriers. So we get two more NADH. Acetyl-CoA is then gonna go into what's called the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle. And during this process, we are going to break down the acetyl-CoA completely into carbon dioxide. And so in cellular respiration, we're gonna take that six carbon glucose and we're gonna break it down all the way to six CO2. Now, during the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, we get two more ATP by substrate level phosphorylation, which again is a direct synthesis, and we get more electron carriers. We get six NADH, and we get two FADH2s, which are another electron carrier. So notice if you look at ATP, total per glucose, you can get about 32 ATP per glucose doing aerobic cellular respiration. So notice that we only got two in glycolysis, and we only got two in the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, which means the bulk of the ATP comes about from the last step, which is the electron transport chain. That is where the bulk of the ATP is gonna be produced. We get about 28 ATP per glucose by what's called oxidative phosphorylation. We'll learn about that later. So these earlier steps are important, not just for the ATP that they produce, because they produce very little ATP, but the main product during the beginning of cellular respiration that's so important is all of these electron carriers because all of these electron carriers will go to the electron transport chain. They will drop off electrons at the electron transport chain. And as those electrons go down the chain, they give off energy. And that energy is used to produce ATP. And so we are now looking in our oxidase test at the last step of the electron transport chain looking at if bacteria can use oxygen as what we call our final electron acceptor. And so let's look at our oxidase test. So the purpose of our oxidase test is to test bacteria for the oxidase enzyme, meaning do they produce oxidase? And what that essentially does is it tests if oxygen can act as the final electron acceptor during aerobic respiration. So what that means is that the electron transport chain is the last step in cellular respiration. And so where this takes place is that if you're talking about a eukaryotic cell, this takes place in the cristae, which is the inner mitochondrial membrane. 
if we're talking about prokaryotic cells, remember that prokaryotic cells do not have membrane bound organelles and therefore they don't have mitochondria, this step, this reaction will take place within the cell membrane. And so during the electron transport chain, there are these large multi-protein complexes and these multi-protein complexes are used to transport electrons down an electron transport chain. All of those electron carriers that we generated at the beginning, so the ones that were produced during glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and the intermediate step, all of those electron carriers, the whole purpose of making all of those electron carriers in the beginning was because those electron carriers then go to the electron transport chain, they drop off electrons at the chain, and they go back to being NAD+. And so the NAD plus can go back and can pick up more electrons. Now, as the electrons go down the chain, they give off a little bit of energy. And when they give off that energy, that energy that's given off by the electrons is used to pump hydrogens against the gradient, meaning it's gonna pump hydrogens from its low concentration in here to the high concentration here. And as hydrogens go back down the gradient from high to low, that is where we're gonna generate the bulk of the ATP by an enzyme called ATP synthase. So in this experiment, what we're doing is we're looking at do bacteria use oxygen as their final electron acceptor? That is during aerobic respiration. Not all organisms do that. Some bacteria only do fermentation, which we'll talk about later. Next time, we'll talk about how some bacteria do nitrate reduction, where they will use nitrate as the reducing agent, meaning that's what's gonna take the electrons from the electron transport chain. But in this case, we are testing if oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor. So in our experiment, oxygen is going to be our substrate. That's what we're testing, if oxygen can act as the final electron acceptor. The enzyme that we are testing is cytochrome C oxidase. Notice that that is going to be what's called an endoenzyme. It's within the cell. Our product is going to be water. So when the electrons get taken from the chain, oxygen becomes reduced and it forms water. Remember that reduction is a gain of electrons. So when oxygen gains these electrons, it forms water, and water is gonna be our product. So for our biochemical test, our substrate is oxygen. We wanna know, is oxygen the final electron acceptor? Cytochrome C oxidase is the enzyme in this test. It's an endoenzyme, and our product is going to be water. So this is how we are going to test to see if bacteria produce the oxidase enzyme. Do they have cytochrome C oxidase, which allows them to act, to have oxygen act as the final electron acceptor? So this experiment would be done in pairs. And so what you would do is you would have this filter paper and you would label one side EC for E. coli and you would label the other side AF for alkaligenase faecalis. And so I would label those two bacteria I would draw a line down the middle. And so what I would do is I would take my stick, my wooden stick, and I would break it in half. And I would transfer E. coli to the side that says EC and alkaligenase faecalis to the side that says AF. So I use my wooden stick, I add it to the paper, and I add the oxidase reagent. So in this case, I actually add the oxidase reagent before I add the bacteria. So the oxidase reagent is on, this, on the paper, and then I add the bacteria. And within 20 seconds, you want to look for a color change. So if you get a color change within 20 seconds, that would be a positive. So our positive in this test is going to be pink-red within 20 seconds. That means that oxygen was acting as the final electron acceptor during this test. So positive pink red within 20 seconds. Be careful, your book, when they talk about the oxidase test, they say that the positive is blue purple. 
In our case, our reagent is blue purple. That is not the positive. So make sure when you're wa when you're looking at your question sets that you make sure and you include that the positive is pink red. The pink red is the key. Pink red within 20 seconds. So that's my positive. So this one would be my positive. Negative would be no pink red. So notice no pink red. Or if it turns pink red after 20 seconds, that is still a negative. The reason that it could turn pink red after 20 seconds is that the oxidase reagent, that's the name of the reagent in this test, the oxidase reagent can be unstable and over time can oxidize on its own and can start to turn that pink red simply because of the oxygen in the air. We wanna know, do bacteria produce the oxidase enzyme? And so as a result, we need to do our readout within 20 seconds so that it's not a pink red due to the reagent auto oxidizing. The other key to this experiment is notice when we transfer the bacteria, we use a wooden stick. We do not use a loop. That's because metal is also oxidizing. And you can get a false positive by the fact that the metal is what's causing the reagent to turn pink. So we can't use metal to transfer the bacteria. We have to use a wooden stick and our readout has to be done within 20 seconds. If it turns pink red after 20 seconds, that is not a positive. That is simply due to the reagent being unstable. And so this would be what our oxidase test would look like. So when we do this experiment, notice we have our alkaligenes faecalis over here and we have E. coli here. Notice that the alkaligenes faecalis has a pink red associated with it, while E. coli does not. So alkaligenes faecalis is gonna be our positive and E. coli is going to be our negative. And so this is the way that our oxidase tests work. We do not have a pH indicator. Our substrate is oxygen. We're testing if it's the final electron acceptor. Our enzyme is the cytochrome C oxidase. Our product is water, no pH indicator. We do have a reagent. The reagent is referred to as the oxidase reagent. It detects if that reaction is occurring. And the positive is pink red within 20 seconds. Negative, no color change, so no pink red. Or pink red after 20 seconds is still a negative. And so this is our oxidase test. And I'm going to demonstrate and show you the video of me doing this test. So in this experiment, we are going to do our oxidase test. And the purpose is to determine if bacteria produce the oxidase enzyme. And so what I have is I have a filter paper and the filter paper has alkaligenes faecalis and it's gonna have E. coli. And so to start, I'm going to start with my oxidase reagent and I'm going to add it to each side of the filter paper. So I'm gonna put a drop on each side. All right, now I'm going to take my stick just like in the earlier test, and I'm going to break it in half. And I'm going to add both bacteria to the plate. So I'm taking E. coli first. I'm gonna add my E. coli. So there's my E. coli on there. We're gonna to look to see if we see a pink color change. a little bit more of the alkaligenes. And so notice if I compare the two sides, notice you see some of this reddish pink starting to form on this side where the alkaligenes faecalis is, and this one is not. So E. coli is going to be negative for oxidase, and alkaligenes faecalis is gonna be positive. It has that pinkish red color that is going to be our positive. 
And so this is how we do our oxidase test.